That's swag. They got them little fucking bags that come with free headphones and Walkmans and iPods and shit. That was swag. All of a sudden, the lingo changed. Social media has changed a lot of you motherfuckers. And it's, it's baffling to me. You change how you talk to your parents. You change how you talk to people in the street. You change how you dress. Motherfuckers got on super tight pants, chameleon print colors, tights and skirts. Since when did money make it cool for you to dress like the opposite sex? What do you believe in? Honestly, at the end of the day, after you get finished frauding on the internet, putting up all these selfies and faking your life, and this is for the people out there who faking, knowing they faking. For those of you who just, you know, go to work and put up pictures and do, do your thing. But for motherfuckers who know they out there frauding, let's keep it a bean. When you sit down at night, do you look in the mirror at all when you're in your house by yourself? Do you look in the mirror? Do you know what I'm asking you? Do you pray before you go to sleep? Do you think about what your mom is doing right now when the day's over and how she's feeling? Or are you worrying about what's going to happen tomorrow? What outfit you going to wear? Turn up. Are you online talking about you about to watch this particular show? Don't hit my fucking phone or you can get bunkied. Meanwhile, we're perpetuating the stereotype of homosexuality. Blacks being nothing but thugs, two big gangsters and con artists. Or they got to be rappers and basketball players. But y'all eat this shit up. And I'm not saying the show's not good. And those of you out there who are addicted to this shit know what I'm talking about. But you have to know what you're watching, educate yourself. When I say educate yourself, that don't mean go get you a grant, a Pell Grant, and then go to CCP and go get you a little BA in something. You could do that too. But the education you need to seek cannot come from a book that is given to you by a fucking teacher or instructor. You have to go get this information yourself. And it's readily available. For those of us that live in Philadelphia, have you ever been to the main library down thir uh, 19th Street or whatever? Have you been down there? For those of us who don't know what friends were saying in cases and all that, do you know that cases are a public document that you can go down 13th and Filbert to CJC, pay a couple breads and get the fucking document and find out if your homie was snitching? Find out if your girlfriend really turned state's evidence? Don't you know you can do that? No, you don't because you're so worried about whose ass is fat. You're worried about basketball bitches of Bermuda. You're worried about turn down for what? I'm not afraid to address these topics. Y'all afraid to talk about it yourself because you know you walk that path. Are you afraid to jump off that joint? Like when your mom used to ask motherfuckers back in the day, if all your friends jumped off the bridge, would you jump with them? So are you afraid to stop following the jackasses because they going to ridicule you and come at you? Or do you give a damn about your soul, about yourself, and about those who actually care about the path you are walking and say, you know what? I don't give a fuck about fitting in with you niggas. I'm over here. By the way, I've been over here my whole entire fucking life, and I'm telling you, it feels amazing. All my life, since I was an adolescent who could remember, and my first recollection came when I was two years old. Ask my mother and my brother, for those of you who know my family. I can't recall a time where stuff made more sense to me than it started making sense last year. And I started seeing the signs when I was a child and I won't even be around motherfuckers doing nothing bad. And yet when I'm gone, I hear all this chitter chatter. Hawk this, hawk did this, how did, when? Where was the fuck, where was I at? When did I do these things? But see, I used to react negatively. I used to snap. Fuck that, fort niggas and all that. And see, this is where the resentment comes in from certain people because they know I've never been some actor. Yes, I can entertain because I'm charismatic, but I've never been some actor. I've never been some bloviating hyperbole dude. When I was younger, I always had a fucking job. When I couldn't work at illegally for a check, I always had a fucking hustle working at Power Game on 52nd and Samson as a young boy selling video games to the rest of the young boys in the hood. If y'all ever been out Southwest, I used to work at Power Game on 61st and Woodland Avenue when I was a young boy out there too. 69th Street Pizza Hut before it got turned into a fucking Hindu diner than Domino's way before all that shit. I was working in a restaurant down there when I was a young boy, 16, going to University City. Jaguar pride all day. With that being said, I've never 
experience not having some way to make an income. Even when I was a young boy, like 12 years old, you know what I was doing when I was 12 years old? I was right across on 52nd and Market inside Thriftway bagging groceries with a fucking double mint gum box in front of my fucking self and Miss Cynthia passing me groceries and I'm getting dollars and quarters supplying myself Super Nintendos and systems and games without a responsibility in the world. And I used to react real negative to the chitter chat because motherfuckers couldn't do what I was doing. And then because of the things that I've done, stealing out my mom's pocketbook when I was a kid, stealing games from out of West Coast video on 56 and Vine when I was younger, niggas snitched on me, by the way. Things that I did when I was younger that people saw and then seen how I changed shit up and it still was a bad motherfucker doing whatever the fuck I wanted to do, but had enough wherewithal to be able to do what I needed to do to get to that next level. Or they didn't like that. How the fuck a nigga like him be able to do that with all the shit he doing? And that's how they felt. And that's how some of them still feel to this day. And yet, I never gave a fuck. I didn't give a fuck back then. I damn sure don't give a fuck now. I've been living on my own since I was 14 years old at all different places in this motherfucking state. Philadelphia didn't see me on North, West, South, Southwest, G-Town, Logan, Erie Ave. I lived in Phoenixville. I've even had a spot in Westchester before. Then all the places I've traveled in and out of this state. Listen, man. I've been on my own and God has blessed me because I come from 52nd and Mark and Lindenwood Street. And motherfuckers that know me know coming out of 44 North Lindenwood, we ain't have much coming up. And for the shit that I was able to see in my life, the lessons I was able to learn, and I still got this life to live. Yo, if y'all ain't know me when I was a kid, I was horrible. I had straps pulled on me every other fucking day for the type of shit that I was getting into. Me, my nigga Thirst, my man Teddy. Running through alleys, jumping on people's roofs and doing all shit that you see on these movies nowadays, these Project X niggas. We was doing shit like that when we was little ass kids, man. Real rap. Old ladies pulling straps on us because we jump in their fucking backyard through the alley, playing on their fucking swing set. Little ass de deviant little fucking kids with no guidance. Who put me right here to do what I'm doing right now? What adult sat me down and gave me this? Don't worry, I'll wait. I'll give you a couple seconds. I wish I had the Jeopardy music right now. I'd play it. I'll let you in. Nobody. That's the answer. This is me, self-reflection. Just being able to sit by myself and think about what I'm doing with my life. Not be sitting by myself thinking who the next bitch I'ma fuck. What's the next scheme I'ma pull? And it, speaking of schemes to pull, this is gonna take me away from what I wanna do. And I wanna get sure, I wanna make sure that the lady who texted my phone and said, can I play that I'm on it? Yes, I'm gonna play I'm on it, but I gotta say this. Fuck you niggas and fuck you bitches that's on these Instagrams with these fake ass get rich quick scheme jones. Why the fuck would you even listen to? I ain't gonna put your name out there for the female who got burnt by another female because it's a female doing this credit scheme shit, this flip your money shit. Yo, first of all, you a dickhead yourself for even giving some stranger money and sending them the money. But as I've said, we've all made dumbass mistakes, so I'm not judging you. I'm not Jesus, nor God, not a judge. And my last name ain't Dread either, so with that being said, your fault for sending money to a stranger. But for those of you out there who are making these fake pages, you need to stop. Because there's people like me who know how to track you through your IP address. Computer technology is what I went to school for. And IT as well. Information technology for those out there not to know. I'm not saying I will come hunt you down because I'm not giving you shit. But, and listen, I'm dead serious. I wouldn't give you shit. And every fucking female that I've ever popped off from social media who listen to the sound of my voice, if they see this right now or if they watch it as a rebroadcast, on fucking YouTube, I'm telling you right now, any female that has ever met me from social media, and I use social media because I've met some pretty nice ass women and some pretty bad ass bitches. So I've met both types through the social media, some that I can't ever and will never talk to ever again. I was just being sociable and giving motherfuckers a chance because I'm not a angry, I can't talk to nobody, fuck you all type of person. But that being said, they'll tell you, I'm not trying to push up on them I'm damn sure not flipping out no whack of cash. Like, uh, you know what I'm saying, yeah, man, we gonna go down Fat Tuesday, you know what I'm saying, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> Do this LL Cool J thing and let vanilla ice cream melt down your nipples. No, you understand what I'm saying? 
I have not used my my stroke. I ain't talking about that stroke, ladies. Anyway, I'm talking about I haven't used my power, my influence. I haven't used money, what I do for a living, or anything like that. I come and meet a woman as myself, as what you see. I don't try to impress you with stories of my past history with selling the most packs in the world. I don't try to intimidate you by saying I murdered 55 people that ate their body with my teeth. I'm just myself. For the women who I've worked with, with music, had nothing to do about chilling with each other. Ask them women. Some of the women bad as shit. I'm going to say one woman who I'm hoping watching right now, who I hope get on this motherfucking thing right there, Street Heat Volume 3. I need a new track for it. Reese Stacks. I shot a video for her. I interviewed her. She showed extra love that she didn't even have to show by paying extra bread that she did not have to pay. Love you for doing that, by the way. Real shit. Ask that woman. Hit Reese Stacks up right now. Hit her up on Twitter. R-E-E-C-E-S-T-A-C-K-S. -E -E Hit her up. Or better yet, call me. 215-471-0713 is that number. That number one more again. 215-471-0713. I'm telling you. She'll let you know. That nigga ain't push up on me. He wasn't grabbing booty or always trying to walk behind me. In fact, he was walking in front of me. Damn, he wasn't all grabbing and trying to slide hands down, backs and all. No, motherfucker. Not because she's ugly. Not because she's not attractive. Not because she's, I'm gay. No, because I was doing a professional job for this woman. So for all you women out there who are DJs like DJ Lazy K, I shout out to DJ Lazy K out in New Jersey. For the females that, that, that host the shit, that run they shit, and for the niggas that host and run they shit. When you get the opposite sex to come work with you, I don't care if y'all get married 10 years down the line, y'all just had chemistry, it was beautiful. Listen, I don't give a fuck about none of that. Keep that fucking business exactly that. Business. I know a lot of motherfuckers that then fucked up relationships with other people because they made them feel like, oh, everybody gonna be like that because they work with that motherfucker. He was on some sando bay like the track was hot. I give you like five more hours, you know what I'm saying? What's up? You trying to go to the after hour? Yeah, you know I mean, like I'm trying. I don't want to fall into that category. So any woman that I've ever done any work with, shout out the uh, director Shadow Skill Instagram, hit her up, director Shadow Skill, all one word. If any of the females out there I've ever done work with and or for, whether I hosted your ciphers, whether I did some 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 headshot photos, whether I did some feature tracks with you, whether I interviewed you, whether I made you a beat, whether I shot a video, whatever, if I designed a logo for you, any women that I ever did anything for, please let these people out there know I wasn't on no horn dog. Oh, because I'm the host or because I'm the motherfucker that run my joint. I'm about to just sweep talk this bitch and see what I'm about. It's not what I'm about, man. And trust me, even if people come to me thinking I'm going to be on that time, just like the title of today's show is, baby, trust me, I'm not stressed. I'm not, man. I'm not stressed. It's Radio AFG Live. You see me on the double joint. You see the little small head. You see the big head. <laughs> make sure you guys tune in tomorrow night as well. It's not over yet because I'm about to play some and all that, but I'm just saying, make sure you guys tune in tomorrow night, 11 p.m. to 11.30 for the live feed and 11.30 to 11.45 for the extended podcast on blogtalkradio.com's edition of Radio AFG Live. And if they still under a DDoS attack, that's a direct denial of service for those out there who don't know the computer speak, I won't be able to upload music on that joint. And that's what happened tonight. I was able to play my audio from the applause effects in the intro, but once I tried to upload more music, I didn't took everything down, re-put stuff up, wouldn't let me put shit up, so I had to come here, do it this way, get things popping for you guys, and I don't have no problem doing that, so thank you very much for rocking with me. It's not over. I'm just saying thank you very much for rocking with me and supporting me because I appreciate you guys. Now, Miss, I ain't going to say your name, but Miss C, I'm going to play the track right now that I'm on it, y'all, so... She was thinking, oh, I wasn't going to play it. I forgot all about what you were saying. No, I didn't. I just got into my whole little soliloquy about, you know, about everything that you just heard me talking about, basically. So don't worry. I'm about to get to that track right now. You know what I mean? Apologize for the audio. 
You know what I mean? Because right now I got to play it at a certain volume. But with that being said, I'm going to do this for you. The track we about to play right now on Radio AFG Live is yours truly, featuring my main man, Mr. 215, J. Matt. The track is produced by the homeboy, Saru Beats, S-A-R-U-B-E-A-T-Z. Holla at him. And it is entitled, I'm On It, live on Radio AFG. 